Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's Real Talk Bluegrass. I'm Michelle Lee, and we're welcoming um, uh, Steve Dillon, multi-award winner, and Corey Zink, along with Sammy. We're uh, enjoying a, a, a beautiful day on a, what is this, Wednesday? <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining us today. Pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. We're glad to be here. So obviously, real talk. We want to talk real. We want to talk bluegrass. And first and foremost, you know, what's going on with both of you um, during the uh, COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions in each of your states that you guys have going on? So, Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about what you and Sidelight have been up to. Well, like everybody else, not a whole lot of, of anything uh, as far as band, uh, band wise. We had just come off of a, a West Coast tour and uh, uh, back in March and the, the last two dates canceled and we came straight home and we had to stop in Arkansas, I should say, and then we came straight home and we've done two uh, Facebook live stream shows and other than that, just been, as I like to say, sitting at the house eating. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm real good at that. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's about it it's unfortunate we've had so many shows canceled and uh several of the promoters we've worked for held out as long as they could with hopes of of still having their show but um right you know it, 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 it fell through and and we're just hoping all of this will end soon and yeah uh, our state here in north carolina the regulations are are moving forward we're in phase two of a three-step phase to to reopen the state. So uh, we're just hoping, uh, of course, we just, we don't play just in North Carolina, of course, uh, but uh, we're just hoping things will get back to normal, whatever that's going to be. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, hopefully you're not kicking back and eating too many uh, Krispy Kremes like uh, our fellow uh, uh, person here, Mr. Corey Zink. And uh, Corey, I know you, you've been a, a little busy uh, being back and forth, uh, from your hometown back to Tennessee, but you've been in the studio as well, right? That's right. Um, we started off with this COVID thing. You know, we were up north visiting some family and it, it, it got crazy. It got real uh, busy, you know, with all the stuff getting in the news. And we decided we better make a trip back to Tennessee and check things out. We decided to stay up north with family, do a lot of shopping for them and, and uh, help the, the older folks in our family. And, um, you know, it worked out good, but we wanted to get home. So <laughs> after <laughs> I had enough of, of that and we got back home and, and things are things are starting to get better. Down I see things are opening up and uh, the tourists are coming back. Pigeon Forge, which is uh, we're looking forward to things opening up. Um, it's even stalled our progress in the studio. You know, the studio was shut down and right opportunity to get in there for the last couple of months so i've been in there the last couple of weeks just trying to get caught up again and get the project sort of wrapped up or hoping to get it done sometime well i, I think that's the key thing of at this time is people eventually getting into the studio and getting ready to release new music um especially you know ones that you know haven't had some new stuff out hint hint <laughs> lately um but uh first uh, you know on talking about music uh, steve congratulations to you and sideline um round two uh ibma officially released today so everybody mm -hmm. check your emails if you're ibma members and get your votes in because they do count and um if if i'm not, not mistaken i think it's six or seven categories sideline is uh, nominated and one of them being entertainers of the year so congratulations yeah, to you well, thanks. thank you yeah we're honored uh we showed up pretty well in this second ballot and got a few uh individual nominations for for some of the guys in the band as well so uh we're uh we're hoping to, to that our fans will come out and vote for us and uh get us in there. that was such a thrill to, to to win the song of the year last year for us and uh we couldn't be there so we would love to be there in person for something this year <laughs> Of course, we're all waiting to hear how that is going to be un unfolding. Because, um, like you said, you know, North Carolina is in a, a three phase process, and hopefully, we'll know soon uh, the yeah. life and the, the lifeline of IBMA and the world of Bluegrass Week. And uh, those guys over there at IBMA is definitely keeping us up to date as much as possible as they prepare for the fun filled week of amusing music uh, in Raleigh. Uh, 
you know, speaking of music and speaking of um, relationships and bands and, you know, connecting, um, you know, and becoming entertainers, you know, you, you entertain, you both do, you're two top notch entertainers um, and that in the industry. And, you know, I think that's a huge uh, factor for folks to realize when you're going to shows, you want to be entertained. You don't want to just see people just hanging out on stage, playing their instruments. You can do that like we are now. We're at home watching videos and we're trying to support everybody. But, you know, what's your drive for each of you um, to make your show something that when folks walk away, they're remembering you as your act and what you guys do as your art? Well, go, go ahead, Corey. <laughs> I, I think, um, you know, we just kind of, I try to be as real as, as we can be. You know, I think that um, it's really hard to connect with an audience if you're, if you're trying to be something. You know, we just try to have a lot of fun. We try to interact with each other. And, uh, you know, if, if people are into the music and they're, they're having fun with you, it makes it easier to perform. And I, I think you kind of feed off of each other. And if the audience is feeding off of you and you're feeding off of the, the audience, uh, the time goes by. So I know uh, if you've seen Sideline, that's that's a <laughs> show. Those guys are incredible. And the energy in their show on stage, the, the audience, watch the audience when you see Sideline, you know. Um, oh, yeah. It's important to be real who you are and, and have fun with it. And um, the second you're not real, the audience sees it and feels it. I, that's my belief. So, um, as goofy as I am, I just act like. <laughs> well, you hit the nail on the head. You you be real. You be yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, that's what we always try to be. Just be ourselves. And and like you said, feed off each other. Uh, my dad told me years ago when I was a kid getting started in this. He he always almost preached it to me. He said, "If you love the people, they'll love you back." And uh, that seems to certainly have worked well for us. And uh, of course, Jason and I, all we had to do is get a bunch of young guys. We can't keep up with them. They, they create all that energy up there. So that's a, us old guys just kind of stand back and, and, and let them do their thing. I mean, Skip jumps off the stage. Can you see me jumping off the stage? <laughs> that, would be a, that would be a sight to see, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. He jumps off of, of, of him sometimes, and I'll look down, and I'm like, I'm not so sure he can get back up on this stage. And then, lo and behold, he would talk to somebody, and he's got a something to climb back up on, you know. So, uh, uh, but I, I think I'll just stay stationary. <laughs> Leave it for the young guys. And, well, and, and a key thing, I think, for both of you, um, you guys have a style, not only, you know, your performance of and develop, uh, your delivery of your songs and that, but you, the style of presentation. I think that's another key thing. You know, Corey's got that that business but sassy look with the suits and sparkly and design ties, you know, it goes green, it goes red, it goes purple. Um, and you know, you guys, you, like you said, you got the younger hipper, you know, hipper, <laughs> you know, and blue dress yeah. guys. So you're kind of doing the, you know, jeans and flannel shirts and things like that, but you guys unify each other and, uh, complement each other and what you guys wear. And in Corey, you know, that has got to be like a key factor of your presentation and how you guys feel on stage, right? Yeah, you know, um, I've taken some heat for it over the years. Different people have said to me, you know, I think you, you look a little bit uptight. You need to relax a little. You need to take the jackets off. You need to take the tights off. Um, but I grew up in a, in a family band. We played traditional country music in dance halls. And um, my dad, you know, he used to he used to say that it puts you in a good mindset when you get dressed for a performance and it gets you ready to perform. And it also shows a lot of respect to the audience. You know, they're, they're paying a, a fee to get in to these different events. And um, so it's just something that kind of happened with me over, over the years, just always did that. And um, I've gotten far more compliments, negative comments for it. Uh, and the guys too, you know, when we all get dressed up in our suits and put our ties on, um, you know, each other and go huh, if they saw you the other way you know <laughs> but, but it's everybody in a good frame of mind 
Um, and it just feels good to look good, you know, and, and the audience seems to like it. We do have shows where we dress down. Sometimes we do the jeans and just the shirts and, and relax. Um, but, uh, but I like it. I like dressing have, and, and it's just something that I, I plan to continue to do really. So Steve, how do you, <laughs> I mean, you, you, you've been playing for what, over what, 30 plus years now. And, yeah. you know, third time out, it's kind of had a, a delivery of <laughs> uh, their attire. And now here we are with sideline um, kind of, keeping the flow going and uh and that do you think it's a more of an influence from the younger crowd younger guys in the band yeah i mean like typically on the indoor shows i wear sport jackets a lot uh, mm -hmm. and these guys seem to wear vests a lot um so we kind of tend to go with that look a, a more um in between I, I almost, yeah so so to speak uh but I, you know and and when it's 95 degrees out, this old boy can't wear a coat or I'll pass out on stage. You know, it's just, it's the way it is. And, uh, but we, uh, you know, we, I would say from the start of our band <clears throat> to where, excuse me, to where we're at now, you know, we've probably changed and, and got a little, got a little cleaner, I guess you should say. But, uh, you know, I want these guys to be their self. They're who they are. And I want them to express that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've always lived by that model. You know, it's really weird because when Sideline was formed, you know, Sammy there can tell you, I worked with him, with Russell and third time out for several years. And when we started Sideline, uh, it was just a side gig. It was never going to be anything 100 plus shows a year, traveling the tour bus, IBMA, all the things that it is now. We never had those goals set. It just kind of happened and we rolled with it. And I'm very thankful that it did. And mm -hmm. I can remember when we first started playing, uh, I mean, we weren't going out in shorts and ball caps or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, it was like, hey, man, we're just out here to have some fun, play some music and, you know, let's roll with it. So I think as our as the band has progressed, the way we dressed has progressed a little bit either. And we uh, a little bit more and we put a little thought into it. Well, sense. I think, you know, I think, too, is when you're at a festival and you have multiple bands, I think it's neat to see the variety of outfits that are being, uh, you know, how they dress, because, you know, here we go. We're going to you know, we're going to hop into the most probably opinion topic here uh, from the, you know, our traditional um, artists to our new traditional sounding artists to our contemporary <laughs> to the progressive and the jam bands um, to old time music. And when you mix them all in appropriately in a festival, you want to be able to identify them not only by their music, but, you know, their style of, of choice of attire. And I think that's what you guys do for yourselves um, and the bands that you guys, you know, work with, uh, whether, you know, like you said, if, you know, if it's a hot day, of course, we're not going to expect you guys being suits. Heaven forbid. No way. <laughs> you know, because right, right. because the fans out there are sitting there sweating, all, you know, as well. So we want to you know, obviously see you guys be comfortable, but we know what what the delivery is going to be. And that's what you guys do. So that's, uh, you know, a cool thing. And, you know, uh, the variety of bluegrass music coming to festivals. Um, this has always been a, a, a subject a lot of people talk about and some not enough. And I think, uh, you know, as these festivals, as of right now, you know, we're seeing them being canceled for because of COVID-19. And we understand that that happened. And a lot of you, you know, everybody's pretty much out of work because of that. Um, but when that gets back in high gear, here we go. You know, it's going to be who's who's still standing, who's right. still uh. wanting to get out there and perform. And I think this is where we're going to see uh, some festivals kind of mixing more of the different variety of bluegrass music in their festivals um, and that. And I mean, how do you feel about, you know, you making that variety change and the importance of knowing and understanding the true genre of bluegrass music? Well, I don't even know who you're addressing that to. Yeah, either one of you. Yeah, whoever. <laughs> I'm, you can tell this is the first time we've all done this. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's real talk, Steve. It's real talk. <laughs> well, I mean, who knows what's going to happen after all this? It's so There's so much uncertainty uh, from the, the concerts 
all the way down to the bands. I mean, I've heard rumors about bands not coming back. I'm not going to name any, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, prominent, prominent bands I've heard rumors about. And yep. these shows are, these festivals are canceling. You know, who's to say they're all going to come back? I mean, there's just so much uncertainty. No one was prepared for this. Uh, and it, it's, 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 it's really sad in a way uh, because I would hate to see a band uh, that's just thriving and doing well and, and had the, we've all had the bottom pulled out from under us. And guys, if, if they went to work with full-time jobs and what, never come back out and touring and pursuing this dream, because Corey can tell you <clears throat> this music, you know, I always refer to bluegrass as a minority music to start with. Mm-hmm. And you have to love it. And it was a dream that we all had to do this. Uh, you know, you, you, you got to follow your, your dreams. So I would hate to see this COVID-19 just shatter people's dreams. And it's just so much uncertainty. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, and, and talking about what, uh, what the promoters are going to do in the bands, I feel like the promoters, they know their crowd the best. And they're all the ones that I speak to on a regular basis are doing everything in their power to figure out what to do uh, and how to do it to make it as safe as possible, but to continue to move forward. <clears throat> as far as the difference in of bands, uh, again, I think it's it's a good idea for the voters to do whatever it's going to take to keep the people coming together because it is a great opportunity for a community of the best people in the world. And I personally have no problem with with uh, the different styles of bluegrass, whether it be new grass, whether it be more traditional grass, um, lean a little bit traditional country. I think the more variety, whatever's going to keep it alive, uh, needs to happen. Um, and the more variety, you know, the better the show, in my opinion. Um, and getting back to your topic before, it's it's often tough to uh, to have conversations about that with a lot of different people because they're they're very stuck in one thing and they don't want to open their arms to any other type of music if they're tr- a traditional <laughs> person might not like um you know new newer grass music or you know yeah. vice versa um, but i'm hoping that everyone will kind of embrace the diversity and just keep these festivals going and support the promoters fill out those surveys, let, let the promoters know what you want and um, the bands too, you know, let them know what bands you like, what you like about the bands, um, anything we can do to keep this alive. Because, you know, the main reason that I play music is, is because of the people and how much I love uh, interacting with them. It's, it's a huge family and it's a wonderful way to spend your life. And, uh, to me, that's what we got to do. We got to keep it alive and we got to do whatever it takes to keep it alive. Well, I think uh, the key thing is, you know, right now, as you're getting those calls of postponements and cancellations is, like you said, talking to the promoter and finding out exactly what can you do as artists and as I as a radio person and and that to be able to, you know, remind folks, hope you know, we don't want this to, to leave. We don't want it to go down. You know, we don't want it to go away. You want to keep the life of those festivals still alive. And as the shows are being postponed or canceled and, you know, you, you see, you know, you could get a refund or, or, or you could put it towards the following year. I think the key thing is if you can, can let it hang for the next year. If you can't and, you know, maybe you still want to support the bands that, you know, you were planning on seeing, especially at the big festivals where you're camping and you go and listen to who you want to hear. I think when they're on, you know, Facebook Live or Instagram Live, you know, the key thing is support them, buy their merchandise, buy the album, yes. you know, yes. you know, if you guys got more merchandise uh, that you recently have just put out, you know, uh, sideline strong or stay strong, stay strong, um, yes. stay strong. And, you know, I think supporting that and putting that out there is uh, the key thing, you know, Corey, you got some merch too, you know I mean? And you got some older albums that people, you know, I, I only met you, what two years ago and it's like what you, you have a whole library of categories you know um and that to me is you know people are just learning you know about you a little bit especially in this who hasn't seen you perform um so here's the time for folks to really support artists and buy the merchandise and 
like I said, artists helping the promoters and get on the same page. I know there's a lot of festivals and a lot of gigs you guys all work, but I think, you know, coming together as a group and a whole is very important to, uh, you know, bring that together and keep it alive where we're not slipping away. We've, we've pushed that issue quite a bit during this downtime. I've had numerous people ask, and I'm sure you have as well, Corey, how, how can we support the artists? And that was part of the, the reason we came out and did the Stay Strong movement or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. uh, with our, you know, sideline logo for the S's. And, and, and it's done really well, and, it, and it's generated some income for the band. Of course, part of the proceeds from that is going to the IBMA Trust Fund as well to help out uh, musicians. But I tell people, you know, buy their merch, order offline, stream their music, download their music. Uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, we make artists make money off streaming and downloading. That's the way it is now. And uh, so uh, we've tried to push that and not just for us, for all artists as well, because, man, we're in this together, you know, with our peers and, and uh uh, it's been a tough time, so so definitely I encourage anybody to to buy this this merch. You know, go to Corey Zinc and and just help him out <laughs> and let him buy some new ties. <laughs> Company CD you buy? I heard. I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> you know, I said they get a free sideline CD with every Zinc and Company CD they buy. Hey, there you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention too is if you go out on social media, a lot of bands do media like Twitter and all those places to advertise their stuff. But I think that this is an important time for everybody to come together and the bands help the bands, <clears throat> help the promoters, the promoters help the radio stations. I think we all have to come together and we need to start sharing the shows, sharing the flyers, you know, um, just, just keeping everybody in mind and trying to help um, let folks know what's going on out there, however we can do it. Uh, it doesn't yeah. have to be for ourselves. You know, if we can help each other, we're all going to benefit in the long run. Cross branding. That's the best way to, to kind of do it is share everybody's uh, things and, and get the word out and keep everybody working in some aspects of some ways. And that, and of course, uh, I know you guys are both going to be partaking in the up and coming, um, uh, event with Ernie uh, Evans and Evans Media Source. Um, give us some more details on that because I know both of you, I, I don't know if you guys are going to be doing it in the same time area. I think, Corey, you're going in July, right? That's right. Steve, go ahead. You can talk about <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing his, uh, you know, he's, he's doing these uh, Save Our Summer uh, festivals uh, events. He's having the first ones in Lincoln, Georgia. Uh, the end of this month, June, I want to say 26, 27, something like that. And uh, we'll be there on Saturday. Uh, I don't have all the information in front of me. I wish I did. but uh, Oh, I'm sure Ernie uh, will chime in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can go to the EMS uh, website. or uh, We have shared numerous uh, flyers on the sideline page as well about it. And he's just, he's trying to put it together and he, he has so many stats about how many events have been canceled this year, and he's just doing what he can to to help bring it back. And they're practicing all the uh, following the CDC guidelines uh, with social distance distancing. Uh, there's some going to be some live stream involvement uh, for people out of state that are they can't be there. I mean, he's just trying to do all he can to basically save our summer. And I see my daughter Stephanie's over here. I think she has some. She get has her the flyer. In. Okay. Get her in. I was just gonna, I was actually thinking about finding it. I, I should have had it up. <laughs> can she read it to you here? Because she can see better than me. But uh, say hello, sorry. Stephanie. <laughs> I just got out of the shower. I wasn't prepared to be on camera. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I'm dad's tech support. So yeah, I'm she is. She's support. my producer for sure. Yes. So uh, it is June 26th and 27th, and it's at the Lewis Family Home Place in Lincolnton, Georgia. And I'll give you the phone number if you guys want to call Ernie for tickets. It is area code 386-385-3500. 
And you can also find this flyer at www.evansmediasource.com. There it is. Look at Sammy. Look at you. <laughs> Love oh, it. Oh, Sammy's got it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, look at that lineup. I mean, uh, Sideline, of course, Deeper Shade of Blue, the Mount uh, Math House Brothers, Rebecca, Rebecca Spears, and the Cordy Norris uh, and Backline all going to be there. It looks like Backline is going to be there on Saturday, too. So, I, I, from what I understand, it, it's going to be a, a fun event. It's going to be online. It's going to be there at sites as well as uh, uh, on the radio um, from when I, I and Ernie had talked. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it is. He's he's uh, he's trying to help the artist uh, as much as he can as well uh, with the live stream uh, proceeds from that or going to artists. Uh, he's selling merch online for the artists. Just different things that, that don't typically happen on your, uh, you know, the way festivals have already been done. So he's come up with a great idea. And like I said, he's he has a plan with the, all the uh, CDC guidelines and whatnot. So uh, he's working really hard. And we're hoping folks will, will come out and support Ernie on this. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's such a great promoter. Of course, everybody, if, if, if they haven't heard, <clears throat> I, I, I'm shocked. But of course, he, you know, he uh, has taken over the Adams. Um, festivals mm -hmm. and you know what a time to come off of uh, uh, you know a few cruises and then come into uh, all your shows just stop at the top of the hat oh, you man. know yeah. hey well we got some folks already uh, just because you're talking about it they're buying your stay strong merchandise Steve <laughs> hey cool well it, it, it's great it's a great message uh, you know it's just something Skip came up with uh, he and uh, Carol Vaughn, who uh, handles all our merch for us, and they come up with that idea together. And uh, people just jumped on board with it immediately. And, and I know we've had people that have hit us up that, that aren't necessarily uh, Bluegrass fans that just mm -hmm. saw the Stay Strong. And uh, speak of the devil, he has walked into the room there. Let's get him on board here and, <laughs> and tell you, people, Here's the man himself, Mr. Cherry Holmes. <laughs> well, he's got, yeah, well, he's, he's, yeah, he's hiding got, from he's you. Got big cherry. Here, I'll let you have it. We're talking about the Stay Strong stuff. You, you, that was your, that was your baby. Yeah. Um, we. Uh, sorry, I just kind of woke up from a nap. <laughs> um, we uh, came up with that idea to to kind of help encourage people to. Remember, yeah, there, there it is right there. Uh, to remember to uh, to support your, not just your artists, but um, one of the things I've been talking to people about is the gig workers, like um, sound men, production teams, uh, anybody, you know, at least, you know, even a musician might be able to give a, a lesson online here or there uh, to, to help make up the difference uh it's not much but but it helps but sound men uh any any of the people there that that, that help put on a show i mean they're on permanent hold until all of this lays up so uh kind of uh wanting to give a little bit of something back and uh and help all of these people out was, was our main goal there and and uh it was uh it, it's gone really really well we've We've been able to sell a lot of those shirts and and uh, generate some some decent funds that we can shuffle off to the uh, um, IBMA trust fund, which is they they've got a whole COVID nineteen uh, assistance fund that they're they're going to start dispersing or have been dispersing to uh, to a lot of these people. So that's that's kind of where where our heart was, and we wanted to to find a way to make that happen. I think that's the, the 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 best thing, you know, coming together again, helping everybody in the industry in, in multiple different ways. Um, today, I had the chance to talk with Joe Mullins and, you know, we talked about, you know, how much donations came in since COVID-19 happened. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, from artists, you know, giving proceeds from a live feed or their merchandise going to it. Cause you never know when you're going to need it yourself. And here's a great way to help everybody in the whole community of bluegrass, like yeah. you said, engineers to the musicians, to the broadcasters and that have been truly yeah. effective. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a, an amazing, you know, thing to do. And so that's a great idea. Thanks so much. Skip. 
Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, I don't mean to burst in, Michelle, but while on that topic, you know, these bluegrass people are loyal people. Oh, yeah. They'll follow, I mean, they'll follow their favorite bands to the end of the earth. And there's and and so many people have jumped in during this time. We've had people make private donations to our band, you know, call us up and say, Hey, you know, I'd like to help you guys out. And and you know, and I'm sure it's happened with other groups as well. And and just the loyalty of these fans that follow, you know, all of all of these groups is just incredible. And in times of need, it, it really shows itself. Well, I know both both of you guys have a huge following. I mean I never realized how many folks follow the Zinc and Company. <laughs> it's the ties, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Skip's got some flashy ties, Corey. He, you and he could work together. I'm telling you. I got a closet full. <laughs> <laughs> and a good point there. And we we had the same thing happen. So many of our our fans and followers reached out and sent messages and letters in the mail and donations. Um, they're just incredible people, you know, and that's why I think it's great what the voters are doing. Uh, give kudos to Ernie and Debbie Evans for, for working so hard to save the summer. You know, it, they're trying to help the bands. They're, they're trying to keep the festivals alive, but they have people calling them, you know, every day begging for a festival. <laughs> they want to, people want to, want to, they want to be back with their bluegrass families and, and have a good time. And, um, you know, that's why we got to work together. We got to get past this thing and, and just help each other in any way we can so we can get back together and absolutely and just look back on this whole thing. It's craziness. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you I know, a, I have a great feeling about it. I think people from what I'm talking and, and talking to and hearing things from, they want to get back out. So I have a good feeling about it when, when the regulations are lifted. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be. I know, you know, each state has their own regulations, and I, I know it's gonna be a slow period of time. Um, but I think, um, you know, hopefully by, you know, September, hopefully earlier, August, maybe, you know, we could, you know, start seeing a little bit of gathering and and seeing folks getting out there and performing and and that. And I think this that this is where you know everybody's gonna have to do the marketing and get the info out there and cross market and help each each promoter whether you're playing at their show or not maybe it's a show you have played in the past th this is time where you say thank you for having me i know i'm not there this year but i'm here to help you no matter what um mm -hmm. because you know you're going to be playing there again you know you, you hope that that that's going to happen and here comes that cross promotion and, and helping and i think you know as uh, we get real we get real with some great bluegrass and uh, make that happen. I think that's a key thing. And um, I think also people are realizing how uh, important radio is for the, the, fa the fans and the artists during this um, because they don't get the live interaction, you know, mm -hmm. and when, you know, you guys need to take care of your family during this time, they're turning to radio and trying to find as much bluegrass music they possibly can out there. I've, you know, luckily I've been able, unfortunately enough, have had since, the announcement of, you know, lockdown here in the state of Ohio, I think I've averaged pretty much about three interviews, if not more, to help the artists stay out there and bring them on the show. And I think that um, they're realizing, you know, they never did not not think that radio was there for them, but they're realizing how important it really is to stay out there, you know, and sure. whether they got new music or not, it's a key thing to, to keep that life lifeline out there and, and reminding folks turn to the radio you know you know tune in request the songs and and keep their music alive and that's how we end up with you know artists being in the second round of ibma getting into that final round um taking home uh, you know the song of the year <laughs> you know that's that's the key thing so um you know and one other thing and i'm, I'm, a, I'm i don't want to keep you guys too much longer but there's there's something in bluegrass that kind of hit me this week that I want to, uh, to kind of talk to you guys about and, and, and whether, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's hardcore, it's real and it's happening. And this is uh, something that I think people need to be aware of uh, how we respect each other as musicians and artists, whether it's radio um, musicians or, the promoters and that social media is a world 
of its own and we know that and i think uh, a lot of things uh behind special groups that are created to have special conversations some that should not happen um i personally think should not happen uh because you need to respect fellow musicians and whether you think it's funny whether you think it's uh you know just a joke people take this serious and i know this is a business you're out there your name's out there your actions are seen whether good or bad and they get talked about um and there's this particular group i won't name the group but i'm sure if there, somebody's watching they know what group i'm talking about but uh you know some people have been really hit hard by how they perform they're in a, you know as a group as a family and and that and i think uh some things that have been said um should have never been said and you know everybody works hard for their craft you know mm -hmm. it, it's a gift but you got to keep at it you practice at it you do what you do and whether you decide to play as a family and skip you've played as a family uh, with the cherry homes and you know it, it, it's you you end up being perceived in one way unfortunately and wow. you know not everybody you know gets why a family plays together and why they either stay together or, you know, go on their own and do separate things. Um, but I don't think anybody in this business should be talking bad about any particular artist or any artist at right um, in that aspect. What do you guys think? Well, no, I mean, you're obviously you're right. Uh, we're all in this together and everybody's, uh, you know, doing everybody at the end of the day is doing the best they can you know, right, wrong, imperfect, whatever. And I'm glad you brought this up. And I'm not going to put Skip on the spot, but I am because he's been through <laughs> a little bit. He's been through this before, this whole topic. And we've had this discussion this week about it. And he's the perfect guy to, to talk to you about this a little bit. I'm I'm going to pass the camera to him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there, there, of course, everything kind of can can steep into the the good old saying if you don't have anything good to say then then don't say anything at all that's a that's a tried and true uh, i'm not saying that uh myself or anybody uh will always hold that one perfect uh but that's uh that's kind of a good golden rule uh i think the one thing that gets uh gets lost in all of this is that what this is at least what it is to me what it was to my family and what it is to me now uh this is my life this is this is everything from the moment i wake up in the morning all the way from how this music and music in general affects my family how much it affects me uh how much how passionate i am for it. uh it's it's an every single day every moment of the day thing and uh it can be really hard sometimes to to take something that you're really passionate about or have literally changed your life and the life of the ones you love over a specific craft and then have people really try their hardest to tear it down mm -hmm. um you already are going to have those those questions in your head you know uh, you know and my Am I not doing, you know, should I not even be doing this? Uh, it's taken a lot away from me. Should I have never walked down this road? Uh, you really can't get into that based off of what others think. Uh, but I definitely know that the the uh, craft that, or at least the, the, the amount of effort that I put into what I do uh, it's really hard when when somebody uh, decides they're going to go after me about what they don't like about it or what they don't like about me. Mm -hmm. Said, uh, I'm very confident in the people that don't like me. Uh, I I don't really care whether you like me or not because I do love what I do, and I do love and stand by every moment that I've put in. Uh, there have been several instances, and I'm sure uh, without me mentioning them, uh, there are there have been several instances when I have been publicly uh, assassinated mm -hmm. on social media, and 
We're not talking about the guitar situation, are we? Well, you know, <laughs> I, maybe. I hate him, Shale. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, that whole situation, I will say that one of the, one of the fr from the moment that I started seeing all of that stuff hitting the screens, I immediately took the stance that I wasn't really going to, I wasn't going to let it bother me. I right. wasn't going to let uh, anybody have the satisfaction of thinking they had reached me, got to me. I didn't respond to anybody hatefully or otherwise. I had a lot of private messages that I just, you know, hey, that's that's your right to feel the way you do. And, and okay, that's fine. And, uh, you know, what, three years later, people are still laughing about it. People are still mad about it. People are still doing their thing. But you had an overwhelming response of positivity. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I had so many people kind of come into bat for me. I didn't have to really respond. My whole thing was, you know, I'm, I'm an entertainer, mm -hmm. and I love what I do. If at the end of the day I'm wrong for doing it, then that's what I have to deal with. It, I don't need you chiming in, tearing me down, just so you feel better about what you didn't like about it. And you're, you know, whatever the problem is there, I, I don't know. But right. I agree, Michelle. People seem to, to always look for the weak spots and go after them with sharp teeth. And in this music, it's a community. It's not just music. It, it, it's, it's, uh, as I said on a on an on a interview with with Kyle Cantrell not long ago, this is this is art. This is an art form that generates a community of people. And if we turn on each other, especially at a time like this, mm -hmm. but if we turn on each other, then we don't have anything. Uh, the, you know, you, you're not going to fill a twenty thousand, thirty thousand seat stadium with bluegrass music. So you, you go for the campgrounds and you go for the, the festivals and you go for everything you can get. And right now is still is not the time for people to be throwing down on people, to be tearing people up, uh, to, to find every little thing that you seem to dislike or disagree with a specific person and go after them for it. You, right. you have the right to your opinion. And, and quite honestly, everybody has the right to voice their opinion. But that doesn't mean you, you should. That doesn't mean you have to. And it definitely doesn't mean that you should do it maliciously in a way that, that I mean, that's bullying is really what that is. It's right. a, and uncalled for. We got to keep the community happy and not bring people down. You no, know? Yeah. We're family. I mean, it's a bluegrass family. And that's why we're called a community and a family in this genre of music because, you know, we love everybody loves what they're doing and how they do it. You know, granted, yes, families bicker and have fights, but you know, and things like that and want to trash talk and stuff. But when it gets to the extreme, it's like, wait, hold on. Um, how are you feeling about you personally? Are you really comfortable about what you just wrote or what you just said? Um, Cause you got to look at yourself in the mirror after you say it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I think it's easy sometimes to, send that little message off and know that you don't have to actually face the consequence of the response. Uh, and I think that's probably why a lot of people do it, but anybody out there that feels like they need to throw down on, on somebody for something, you can really make fun of my hair right now. I'd rather you <laughs> go and, and uh, tear me apart over my hair before you tear somebody else apart about something cool. you don't we're uh, waiting for, you know, we're waiting for Steve's opportunity to, to cut that up for you, you know? The buzz my head, yeah, yeah not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, to that a little bit. I yeah. agree with, with, with what he's saying 100%. Uh, the other thing to remember is that there's a lot of people out there that enjoy tearing other people down. But in the bluegrass world, there is no room for those people and they will be snuffed out. They are quickly tossed out and not welcomed and people know them for who they are and what they are. And they are, they're just not a part of it. They don't fit, they don't belong. Um, and they have some really deep seated insecurities. And that is why they are tearing other people down because they wanna bring people down to their level. They have some serious issues with themselves 
And, you know, it, it, it doesn't do them any good to bring other people down. It just shines a light on their insecurities, and they just need to know that. They need to realize what they're doing, and if they want to be a part of the community of bluegrass music, then they better figure it out quick because it is a lot of love. It's a lot of great down-to-earth, salt-of-the-earth people. And, you know, if you're going to act that way, you just will not fit. Simple as that. Very true. They will not survive. Well, obviously, like we said, this is real. This is real talk bluegrass. Oh, what's up, Sammy? Yeah, I think I think uh, stemming on what everybody's saying here, you know, so I'm a label guy, right? And, and now I, I'm I'm more of an entertainment person, so I'm behind the camera, behind the scenes um, for the most part. And one of the things that we always do is we try not to stay out in front of the camera as much. And when we do are out there, we be careful with what we say. Um, and anytime I say something, I expect that to get said to, to another person. So I'm talking about somebody. I make sure that if whatever I'm saying is okay for that person to hear what I'm saying, or I've already said that to that person. Now, it's just, this is also a business. And on the business side, that's a okay. But when you start just talking trash about people and you think it's okay, even on, say, Facebook, well, people don't realize that there's people like myself, there's other labels, there's promoters. There's, there's people out there who see that, and I don't know if I want to associate myself with what I'm doing. So if there is two bands that are about even, and I've seen somebody saying stuff and hearing stuff back, it's it's like, well, I don't know if I want to associate myself with that. And mm -hmm. people don't really get that. You know, you're allowed to say whatever you want. That's a okay. But for the people who do make comments like that, just know that we watch and we see. And, you know, if it, if you got a no from somebody for some reason, it might have been because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, on that, and on that, you know, I'm going to be um, I had a situation. I was uh, MC an event um, and a band that I've never seen live. Um, they had just freshly just made their first CD uh, and got in my hands, you know, um, about a couple of weeks before I was MC in this event. And this incident happened between the sound gentleman, sound guy, and the act, the, one of the <coughs> band leaders in the band, right there in front of me, in front of the fans. And I will be honest, it has put a a, a, a taste in my mouth saying, do, do you really like the music you're performing, that you're delivering to your fans? Right now, no, for what I've seen, you, you don't, because you literally just had a fight on stage with the sound guy who was just trying to set you up. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah. you know, everybody, you, you, you know, my key thing is be kind, you know, um, we all have our opinions and this is what real talk bluegrass is all about is, you know, having our opinions and, and everything. And whether we disagree or agree, I mean, this is what, you know, we bring together um, in this whole thing. But um, as you know, a lot of folks are saying, you know, Hey, be kind, you know, and, and I think during this time, I think is a, a wide opener, eye opener to uh, bring in that kindness. And, you know, love is free. Kind is free. Yes. And it has a bad taste to it. So let's do the two things that make everything great and love and be kind and make people smile. Right. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, on that, let's, uh, before we uh, wrap things up, uh, I want to hear some funny stories from both of you guys on the road, because I know you guys have some uh, good, fun stories, um, whether, you know, it's been at an event or a festival or in the studio or on a cruise. Well, you know, anything that happens on a cruise, we know what happens. They stay there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, they but, stay you know, on the road pretty good, too. <laughs> and, right, right, right. But, I mean, the fun stuff. I mean, you guys got to have some good fun stories. Pick one that uh, for each of you that stands out. <laughs> You're putting us on the spot there, Michelle. Uh, oh, I know. I love it. <laughs> I, mean, so many, I can tell you a sideline, and I don't know if I can just come right off the cuff and think of one one funny story, there's so many. We have such a great time together on the road and I've never been in a band that, you know, we try to be tourists as well. You know, you're in and out of these towns and, and there's things to see and go and do. And uh, we always seem like we're up to something and there's a funny story that comes out of it. But uh, I don't know, I'd have to think just a second. One I can tell anyway. 
<laughs> that means there's too many good ones then. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, uh, it, it's it's kind of funny, but it, it also has kind of a point to it and a moral to it. Um, we were just discussing this the other day because we're hanging out with some friends and they were asking us about road travel and whatnot. And, okay. and uh, I'm going to speak specifically for, for the guys on sideline. Um, we... We travel a lot. I mean, on, on a typical year, we're averaging, you know, 125, 130 shows for the year. Um, and the the last trip that we took before all of this started, we started out in, in uh, Wapakoneta, Ohio, and then we played a show in Lexington, Kentucky. And then we went out west for about 18 days. Uh, we had, it was night after night after night after night of shows. And I don't even think we had a day off in the string of shows that we played, but we, I mean, we tried to fit as much as we could in. Hey, um, we had Friday the 13th off. Okay. <laughs> we, had, we were all Friday the 13th. Um, but I mean, like, you know, if sound check wasn't until five, then we'd get up early in the morning and run into uh, San Francisco and check out the, the Bay Area there and the uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and all that. And then we'd load up real quick and run over and do the sound check and get ready for the show. And, and we started traveling south. We went to Bakersfield and I actually got to see some family there, which was really cool. We got down to the end of the trip. The last two shows were canceled. We were supposed to play in Los Angeles and then we were supposed to play in Las Vegas before we started heading home. And those those shows got canceled. So after our last show in the Los Angeles area, we packed up and started heading east. We'd been on the road for, you know, 23 days, 24 days. And in, I just kind of sat back and observed all seven of us, the six guys in the band and the bus driver, all sitting in the first 12 to 15 feet of the bus all still laughing goofing off having fun um listening to music talking about this talking about that and i was like what kind of a band situation where you can be on the road that much with these guys and live on that bus and be in tight quarters and at the end of such a long grueling trip with kind of a sour ending of, of shows being canceled everybody's still in good spirits and enjoying being around each other nobody's mm -hmm. hiding out nobody's you know in the bunk or in the back everybody is just right there and i just in that moment felt so blessed to be surrounded by such a brotherhood with the guys in the band and you know we we spend a lot of time together so it's it's really amazing to to feel that after such an intense tense thing so uh that's not really a funny story, but it but it's, it's very cool to me. It's very special to me. Well, it's a, that's a key thing, you know. Yeah, him. I have to go home with him. So <laughs> the fact that either one of us was anywhere near the other was a miracle. No, yeah. just <laughs> it's not. Like so you have to go on vacation with me. So right. <sighs> no, it, it, he, you know, to touch on what he's saying, it is a special thing uh, that we have. Uh, with these guys and Jason, Zach, Jacob, and, and Jamie, they're great guys and, and fun guys to travel with. And 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 I, he's right. I mean, we were out, we were together so many times. We had a one night we finished up in Sacramento, and it was very late getting on the bus. And we had about a five hour drive. We had to be at a TV studio in Bakersfield at six a.m. Uh, you know, for one of these morning live deals and and. And we still were able to laugh and have a good time with it. And I've never really been in a situation like that. <laughs> Corey, you're up, man. <laughs> I'll give you a very brief one that, that really made me laugh. Um, anybody who knows Zinc and Company knows that I've kind of gotten a name for being the donut guy. I, I, I eat donuts everywhere I go. I've tried to find new donut shops, whatever I can find. Donut. And, um, you know, word had gotten out about that. And we had traveled... Uh, many miles all the way up to the Canadian border, Fairfield, Maine, to play uh, the County Bluegrass Festival, which yeah. I know Steve, you, you guys have been there. Mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable place and such good people. We were we were about to set up our table and we started bringing our merch out. And the people 
start coming over and they all, I don't know how many, there had to be five or six people came up and they all gave us a dozen donuts at the same time. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do with myself, but uh, the guys just looked at me and we all started laughing because what are we really going to do with six dozen donuts as, you know, four guys. Um, but that, I just want to tell you that story because you just never know what you come across when you go to these festivals and the people are so sweet. They want to, they want to do anything they can to make it. Uh, they're so loyal, like Steve said. And, um, you know, we had a good laugh. They'll laugh about it years later. Uh, you just never know what, what's going to happen and what people are going to do. Um, so, you know, I, I enjoy that. I, I don't want it to happen again because we couldn't eat it. <laughs> Sometimes when you're traveling around with the guys, you know, you, you experience things like that and it just reminds you why you love the music and why you love the people so much and why, you know, we do what we do. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just awesome. The whole thing is great. I, I probably speak for, for both of our bands when I say that we all probably play music more for the people and more for the love of the, uh, of everybody than, you know, just wanting to play music. Definitely. Well, I mean, I can I can attest to that. When I left third time out, I was retired from the road. I was done traveling. Uh, you know, I had done it for so long, almost 30 years at that time. And to be quite honest with you, I missed my friends. I missed the people out on the road is one of the main reasons I came back out on the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I bet you guys love it. Well, you know, besides the donuts, but the home cooked food. As well. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. You never know what's <laughs> going to get. I, I can tell you, we were we had this uh, up in Winchester, Virginia. We had this, uh, or no, it wasn't Winchester. It was uh, Maryland, uh, Westminster, Maryland is what I was trying mm. to think of. And we had this uh, <laughs> big dinner there. These these people were feeding us, and they had all this food. People were bringing covered dishes, and this guy was like, "Man, you got to try my jambalaya. You know, you got to try it." And, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I'm sitting there eating, and it was really good. And I hear somebody over, and I'm to be fat as I am, I shouldn't be that picky, you know. You wouldn't think I would be. And he talked about this duck that he puts in this jambalaya. And I just immediately took that bowl and poured it into Jason's bowl. <laughs> you know, and he's like, well, man, you were eating it fine. I said, yeah, but once I found out I don't eat duck, you know, I just don't do it. But but you're right. We we get some some good food. We get some crazy food out there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a lady kept bringing me red velvet cakes every time I'd see her. I finally said, "You know, I'm diabetic, don't you?" <laughs> 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 I had one yeah. incident. It was kind of funny. I'll make it quick. This was back with my family, and there were six of us: mom and dad, and four kids. And I was a teenager. My brother was a teenager. Uh, anyway, we were playing this show, and this couple that was kind of helping host the show said, um, well, we'll have y'all over for pizza before the show. We thought, okay, that, that'll be really cool. And we go over to their house and she pulls out one medium pizza. And she goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's enough for all of us to have one. <laughs> Each person got a slice of pizza. And afterwards we're just like, Gosh, I'm starving. Yeah. <laughs> we played the show on basically an empty stomach. But, you know, sometimes it's, that happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> I, you know, all I can say, this has definitely been real. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> right, Sammy? Very no. much so. You know, that was a concept for the idea um, for the show. So um, a little uh, back up at the Bluegrass music, TV, Bluegrass music TV is is meant for all bluegrass music for everybody. And it's going to be a little bit different where we're going to be doing a lot more things like this, getting more interactive with the artists. And then I was like, Michelle, you know, I want to do a show with you. I'm doing one with Ronnie Reno. I want to do with one with you on the radio side. And I said, you'd be perfect for it. And I was like, let's get Steve. And then you're like, let's get Corey. And I was like, <laughs> let's do it. You know, it's live television. Or it's live streaming. What can go wrong? Um, but I'm happy with it. I, I think this is going to be great. Yeah, we I have special, special guests dropping by. Hey, for yeah. Ron, I want to tell you too, uh, look for new music coming from Sideline yeah. as well. We're going in the studio in two weeks to uh, uh, cut 
what, four tunes? Yeah, yet? we're going to start out with four songs. Uh, so, uh, Michelle, you'll be looking for that, for some singles to coming out. Awesome. Probably won't complete a whole project till later on in the year. But uh, Hey, a little bit of something. Yes, definitely. Always love a little taste of new music, that's for sure. And yeah. Again, everybody's got to go. It's sideline.com, uh, right, or sidelinebluegrass? Sidelinebg.com. Sidelinebg for bluegrass. There you go. So BG. make sure you visit there, and then, of, of course, uh, you get the merchandise, get the album. Look at that cover picture. Nice. And, and what better yet, that Thunder Thunder Dan at award right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Steve, Skip, I, I truly appreciate you guys being part of the uh, the debut of Real Talk Bluegrass. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Corey, um, you know, you got your website up, right? It's up and running as well. Yeah, Zinko.com. And, um, you know, we... Um, we're going to have some new music coming out pretty soon too on the sound biscuit label. That. Some singles coming your way. I know you've been begging. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. You keep asking me, how do I get on the top 10? How do I get on your top 10? You got to have new music. <laughs> there you go. Long time coming. <laughs> new music and the fans calling it in. That's for sure. <laughs> Thanks for the deal. Michelle, so. thank you and Sammy for uh, having us. And it's an honor to be on the first show. And, uh, I want to wish the two of y'all good luck on your new venture here, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to do well for for both of you. I, I think so. I think it's. I think we've uh, we hit some you know key topics, and I think each show it's going to get interesting and more and more. And uh, I'm glad you guys were um, part of the 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 kickoff to the whole series as we were been talking about it for weeks <laughs> and narrowing things down. So um, again, everybody visit sideline BG zincandco.com and uh you know check that out be sure to tune in to the bluegrass borderline uh sundays on wobl um radio.com get the mobile app and hey while you're at it just join enjoy uh, me with some great country classics monday through friday as well with the smoke country jam same location wobl.radio.com thanks everybody it's been real it's real talk bluegrass right. thank you thanks